Hey, Peter, you've come up with some great barbecue recipes, but I don't quite get this one. Tom, the recipe is cumin rub chicken, not rubber. Oh, oh man. never mind. Hey, Peter, that's a mistake anyway. Oh, Make man. It more explicit. <laughs> See that? Look at how moist that is in there. That is unbelievable. And, and then all you need to do is pull the breast off, and then it's just a slicing. You can slice off the breast mm -hmm. there. If you want to remove the skin to cut down on the fat a little bit, I mean, you can see sure, as Tom's it comes saying, right the nice moisture. Sure. And that skin has that flavor on it. We've rubbed the inside of the cavity as well, so that'll have it too. Um, I was going to say, when you're buying crab, if you're looking for the meat, almost buy twice as much crab in shell as you need for meat. So in other words, for a pound of meat by two pounds of crab. Oh. And then you'll have a pretty rule of thumb. In fact, it works out with this um, king crab, um, or these Alaskan legs here, you actually get a little extra, so you can take a little ec extra bite as you're making it. Excellent, and again, they are fun to play with. <laughs> Spinach. Look at how nicely these tomatoes turned out. Is that beautiful or what? I zested off a little bit of lemon as okay. a garnish. Excellent. Just put it on top of it, and May that I? is ready. May I try this? Please. Oh, Peter, crab cannelloni. Oops, I don't want to get the hole. <laughs> I mean it, that is absolutely great. Mm. Tidemans has this new pasta and it's called uh, La Bella Pasta. Oh. And what's really neat about it is it comes in a ton of different flavors. Here's a sa salmon, salmon one. Sure. This one's cracked black pepper. Super. Uh, there's a lemon pepper. Excellent. Uh, chili. Chili, chili pasta. Pepper. And, and what I really like about this, I've made a lot of pasta, mm -hmm. and when you flavor it, it's really difficult to get the flavor to come through after you cook it. And these really do it wonderful. It's a fantastic product. I pasta really La Bella. That. And just with the different array of flavors, you can come up with a hundred different things to do with it. I'm going to pour that right into the sink. Boy, that lemon flavor comes out of that. And when you finish pasta, you really want to rinse it well. Pour the whole thing in there. Yeah. Okay. And what we want to do is get a cold water on it and rinse that starch off. Real important when you make salads to make sure you rinse it well because you want to take that starch off it, otherwise it kind of glues the salad together. Okay. We're going to turn our egg whites uh, into a crust. Now I'm going to start sprinkling a little bit of sugar in. Really? I have about three quarter cups of sugar here. And so we're going to let that go in and you just keep mixing it in. What we want to see it get to is nice stiff peaks. And you see how those egg whites came right up for us. Yeah. So that's good. That's part of that. You know, this is the very first time I've ever made meringue, so this mm -hmm. is kind of fun. Okay. There we go. How high, how much do we do here? As much as you can get in there. All right, I can do that. There it is. It should make one pie for us. Wow. All right. Peter. And there it is. That, <laughs> that just needs to set up in the refrigerator. That's going to chill out, and we'll decorate that up and be ready to go. Four hours. About four hours. Green light meal. Green light. No oh, fat. You bet. No, no fat at all. A couple of calories in there, but no fat. Man. And don't forget to pick up your Fresh Approach recipe sheet at your nearest Tidyman's Meat and Seafood Department where you see the Fresh Approach display. There's a couple of handsome guys right there, <laughs> huh? Uh, don't let that scare you when you're walking through the supermarket. <laughs> so the blackjack uh, recipe is kind of like the leftover recipe mm -hmm. or whatever's in the cupboard. Here we go. A little bit of oh, spices. Right? Here, we, Here go. we go. This is it. <laughs> Sunday morning ball game. We okay. got some spices. Only do this at home if you're an expert, which means why am I doing it? <laughs> Look at that. I don't like to put the raspberries in until I start to toss them. Why is that? Uh, they break up so easily that they'll crush them. So we're going to go ahead and give it a toss and then we'll dump the Well, if they break in. up easily, uh, so is it a good idea that if we're going to eat this entire salad now? I guess what I'm trying to say right. is, does this store okay? No, it really doesn't. Once you dress a salad, you could make the salad up to this point and put it in the refrigerator and it'll probably last wonderful for a few hours. Uh -huh. But with the weight of this on top of it, once you start to put ingredients into the greens, the moisture starts taking its toll on it and it wilts the lettuce. So, so what we, we could do that. is we could keep the ingredients separate, put small portions that's together, it. and then... It, and that's a great idea. That's a great tip is to maybe separate them and just take them when you need them. Okay. Look at this. And then put those beautiful raspberries oh, in. raspberries. Oh. Is you can buy the steak right at Tiedemann's. The chuck steak. The chuck steak. Uh -huh. Bring it to the counter. Bring the meat 
um, gentleman over and he'll grind it right then. So if you take, if you pick up a chuck steak uh, mm -hmm. at the store, you can bring it right over to the butcher and he will cut that right up. He'll cut it right up. And that's just wow. what I did. I took a chuck steak just like this. Mm -hmm. What we're trying to get is about 20% fat. That right. makes the best hamburger. Okay. The extra lean, it just doesn't give you that perfect hamburger, and that's what we're all about So today. you've mentioned that before to me mm. in, in uh, private. We've mm. talked about uh, getting less fat hamburger meat, mm. and you say when it actually comes to making hamburgers, you're better off with a little bit a little more bit fat. A little bit more fat. Than... That's going to help the binding and keep the moisture and flavor okay. in that hamburger. Plus, we do cook off a lot of that uh, in the process, don't we? We try to get some of it there, but 20% still within that range, so we're still really right in there. Normally, again, if you were doing this at home, you could have these cut when you start your steaks off, Okay. and then you could just continue on, pull the steaks off, Put these in and we'll go to the next step. Okay, yeah. Right from the Here's plan. the flambe part, right? Right. Just pour it in the pan. Just let it go and then and come back. Ready. Whoa! Look at and that. Then go up. So it's a, it comes on. <laughs> I was like, oh wait. And Man. then that, that frees things up from the bottom and we cook the brandy down to the flame goes up. And that's going to help base our sauce up. See how dark the yes. brandy is? Yes. Taking that caramelization off. Now again, this is a green light meal. Right, and, and it's got that, that sterling silver steak. You see how tender that oh, is? Oh, that it's is unbelievable. I don't tender. even need this knife. Let me try, try these potatoes. Yeah, try that potato. Now that's a very low fat mm -hmm. whipped potato with that sour cream taste in it. Good flavor. You're the master. We'll see you again next week on A Fresh Approach. Try Bye -bye this, you'll now. love it. You are the master, sir. Did you know that Americans consume over 6 billion chickens every year? When you stop to think about it, there's not much mystery to poultry's popularity. Not only does it taste great, it's lean, versatile, and nutritious. Well, today we've got a tasty recipe that really shows the versatility of this delicious, nutritious bird. Hello and welcome to A Fresh Approach. I'm Krem Tooth's Tom Sherry. With me, Tidyman's food expert, Peter Tobin. And Pete's going to show us another great way to prepare chicken. Mm -hmm. Peter? Well, we're going to make a great recipe called Swiss Chicken Florentine. Okay. And we're going to feature a, a Tidyman's chicken called Linden Farms Chicken. Mm -hmm. It's a Washington-grown chicken. Great. Nice, fresh chicken. And that's what's really fantastic about it. We've had wonderful luck with this chicken. Yeah, you notice that some chicken in the stores is uh, driven in halfway across mm -hmm. the country. Mm -hmm. It's always nice to get uh, Washington-grown chicken. Right. It's nice and, and fresh. And this farm's been really well done well for them. Linden Farms, great. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to take that, and we're going to use the chicken breast today, and we're going to show you how to open that chicken breast up, and we're going to fill it with spinach. And that is the Florentine part oh. of it. And then we're going to use a cheese called Jalsberg cheese. <laughs> which is a type of Swiss cheese, an imported Swiss cheese, has a wonderful flavor and it really complements this chicken. And those are going to be, go we're going to put those together and then we're going to do a braising technique, which I'll show you. Lots of new stuff here. And with that, we want to complement that with some mushroom rice pilaf. Oh. And as well, green beans um, that we're going to saute up with mm -hmm. a little bit of dill. But the, when you say Florentine with mm -hmm. chicken, uh, mm -hmm. That means spinach is included right. in the meal. Right. Anytime you see that word Florentine, it's going to have spinach. Okay. And we've got that long grain rice mm -hmm. as well. Yep. We're going to be using that too. We're going to use that and we're going to have some sliced mushrooms in with it. Man, this sounds great. And it's going to be, uh, sounds like we've got a head start with these Washington grown Linden Farm chicken breasts. Stick around for Swiss chicken Florentine right after this. A Fresh Approach is brought to you by Tidyman's. For a tender, moister chicken breast, submerge it in buttermilk for three or four hours in the refrigerator before cooking. Here's another good tip for you. Hey, we're all set to start today's recipe, Swiss Chicken Florentine. Peter, where do we start? Okay, well, we have the breast right here, and we took the time to clean the fat up from them. Just clean up the breast that way. Okay. And now we're going to do a cut with them. All right. What we need to do is we're going to butterfly them open. So I laid the smooth side down mm -hmm. on a piece of wax paper. I like to work on the wax paper. That way you don't have to worry about cleaning up the board. Right. And we're not going to be chopping it. You and all I do is just split it in half 
and you open did, it up a little bit. Okay, so you just took like a, just one little section there, huh? Yeah, you just want to get it the fatter part of the chicken. So like right here? Actually, put the other side, turn it right around. Okay. Okay, so the smooth side goes down on the wax paper, and then just come in with your knife. The thickest part's up here where the thin part is down the bottom. I'm going to take it and just cut it about halfway through. You know, I've done a lot of things, but I have never stuffed chicken breasts. We're actually going to roll these, aren't we? Right, and so if you, and don't worry if you get a little hole in it or something, it's part of the look so of it. So is this okay here? Did I do okay in this? I yep. can come up a little more or what? Keep working that down until it almost lays flat. Kind of cut right down inside it. There you go. You want your other? There you go. Good. You're up one on more. me. Oh, I see. Okay. See it? Yeah. Good. How's That's that? it. That's called butterfly. Very good. We just New technique here, ladies and gentlemen. And this just makes it a little easier. Gives you a little more surface here when we go to roll and fill them. Well, I love working with chicken, though, too, because, I mean, as you can see, there's, like, almost zero fat on this. It's Very such a small great, amount. great food. This okay. chicken looks great, too. So we have these laid out. I'm mm -hmm. just going to lay them out because we're going to have to... I'm so to glad you're using the wax paper, too. We don't do any cross-contamination on our right, uh, cutting surface. Right, that way we can just pick it up and throw it away when we're not ready. So I'm going to put another piece over the top, and what we're going to do is pound them flat. Okay. Now, for those of you at home like me, I don't have a mallet. So Professional use... chef here, ladies yeah, and, and gentlemen. I don't have a mallet to pound chicken at home, so I end up using the back of a pot. Back of a pot. And I just make sure it's, uh, I have that wax paper in between them. Now, we just That's pound it. these good, right? Just give them a nice... Just flatten them out. That's it. That's just don't be wonderful. shy. You told me that before right. in a commercial break. You really want to, what we're just trying to do is extend the surface area of the chicken so, again, it'll allow it to roll up for us. How's this look? Very good. Am I okay there? One more right here. One there, right there. Okay. Right on that end. And that's right, said to the guy. <laughs> Doesn't that feel good? <laughs> that's right. I mean, there's a, there's a certain stress relief from I pounding. want some service here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Oh, look at that. It flattens them right up. And okay. it's a little bit of an aerobic exercise, so there you go. <laughs> All right, what we're going to do, Tom, if you'll just put a little bit of salt and pepper just over the top of them. Okay. While you're doing that, I'm going to take some spinach. I have some fresh spinach leaves here. I'm going to take them over and give them a wash. I just want to rinse them off a little bit. They're going to be cooked, so I'm not in danger with my hands here from touching the chicken. Peter, I love when we're working with things like spinach, too, things that grow so well in the gardens up here mm -hmm. uh, in the inland northwest, because pretty soon the garden, you know, that's all going to come in, and we're going to figure out what are yep, we going to do with it. all this spinach and lettuce and things like that. Very good. And so what we want to do with the spinach is just take them and dab them off on a paper towel okay. just to not, so they're not so wet. Just get wet. the excess, mo excess moisture And just off. spread them out. And what I'll do is I'll do a couple here mm -hmm. and just divide them up. I have about, I got a bunch of spinach and I'm just using about uh, six or seven leaves, just enough to get on the chicken. Beautifully this is fresh. the Yarsberg cheese and I, just to speak about it a moment, mm -hmm. it's an imported cheese. Right. And it's it's in the Swiss family. In other words, it's got the holes in it. Right. Okay. It's got the it's made. It's actually a traditional yeah, Swiss there's cheese. There's the big old chunk of it right there. And As a matter of fact, you can kind of see the holes right yeah, there. Yeah. And you can and so this type of cheese, I think it has a more bolder flavor. A lot of imported cheeses, for some reason, have a more bolder flavor than our dom domestic cheeses. Mm -hmm. And I, I, it just lends another flavor, another mm -hmm. flavor into the dish. Excellent. Which is called Jarlsberg. Jarlsberg. It starts with a J, so if you're looking for it in the stores. And I have about four ounces, four or five ounces here, and you can mm -hmm. just spread it right down the middle of them there, right in the spinach, kind of long ways. Okay. And I'll just continue putting these in. And this is really, we do this all, well, I can't get my spinach apart. That's there right. we go. Um, I do this, this is part of a presentation that we'll see when the chicken's done, how it looks, the way we roll them in like this. And, there we go. Can I tell you another thing I like about us doing with the using the spinach like this? For kids and fussy eaters or even uh, adults who aren't that uh, fond of spinach, uh, this is probably an excellent way good to kind of hide it in there and hide the, you get the goodness of the spinach yet uh, wow, what you, know, you kind of kind of camouflage the spinach taste mm -hmm. a little bit. That's fantastic. That, and I really believe in that. Um, what we're going to do now? Because we both have children yeah. that are six years old. And we're, <laughs> I'm just thinking of that. Well, I'm going to try this now for sure tomorrow night. Okay, I'm going to roll this one up, okay. and all you do is just roll it together. I like to try to tuck the ends in a little oh bit, boy. and that's about it, kind of like a burrito. So this is up. really the flatter the better. That's why we were pounding on right. it. Right, so the more surface area you have to work okay. with. Okay, now if I goof this up, you can fix it, right? Yeah, and, and actually, you almost if it goofs up on you, as long as it's rolled, you probably won't have a problem. And you kind of start the leaf, the uh, spinach rolling first. I was yeah. watching you there. Yeah, and, and the reason why... It's just to, so that makes sure it's in the middle. Okay, and I wasn't able to roll up. 
my uh, one on the side here. Yeah, I have one open here a little bit too. And again, yeah. if there's a little bit, the cheese, if it melts out a little bit, it'll just be in the sauce. That looks that good though, doesn't it? Take hey. a look at that. That's all right. That passes. See? No, oh, that looks good, I think. The last one, we'll roll it up here. Kind of sticks a little bit to the uh, wax paper. Yeah, just from, a bit. that's that aggressive pounding Ex that was going excessive on. Excessive pounding here. <laughs> if you all live right. in an apartment and you're on the top floor, you may <laughs> want to not pound quite as hard, especially this early in the morning. <laughs> All right, the last part of this, to make sure these stay together through the cooking process, okay. you can take, in a lot of recipes I've seen where they take Staple gun. Uh, a toothpick and they'll start weaving it through the seam. All right. I find if we can just learn to use the string here, I'm going to cut you off a piece okay. and we're going to try to do this together. And you can just about gift wrap, but that's what I say to do, is just tie it up. I have a method that I use. Well, I'm going to watch. Then I'm going to show you. <clears throat> I take the, I put the seam side right down below okay. and lay it right on the string. Seam side on the and string. I have, um, and you lay this over the top, and I notice I have an end, loose end out the, there. Yes, sir. And then I have to do this twist. Now, this is really gets a little bit crazy, but I lay this over my hand, mm -hmm. and I just twist it around, and I mm -hmm. make a little knot. Okay, and I, didn't then see I, that. I didn't see that. How'd you I'll do that? I'll be doing it again. Okay. Right from here. Right. And then I twist my hand around. Right. And then slide it over the top, and it almost makes, it's a little bit, uh, boy, I remember when someone showed me this the first time. <laughs> I feel I thought, so inadequate this morning, ladies I, and gentlemen. It was a tough move. <laughs> it's so simple. Uh, Is this what uh, you had to pass your culinary yeah. arts school? You know or? where I had to, you know what's funny is this is, uh, I sail and someone showed me the knots of oh, time. Peter, I didn't get this at all. Let's try it again. Okay. Right? Do I need to start over again? You're right. That, that, I did okay on this one, right? Yeah, that's that correct? good. You just had to put this in. Just go ahead and tie it one more time. <laughs> yeah. Tom, Tom, I don't take, don't take pity on me now. Just show me how to tie it. Okay, okay. When you okay. go across. Okay, hold on. Let me do this again. All right. All right I'm gonna Lay it undo, across. I'm done doing this poor chicken. <laughs> this poor chicken. <laughs> I'm sorry, chicken. I told you it would go. This is, we're gonna, this is now going to be a, an when hour I, and a half program. Well, when I was learning to sail, okay, here we go. someone would show me a knot. And yes. Dang if I could ever get it. Yeah, well. Here, here we you go across your fingers. Yes, sir. And now my finger's going to twist. I'm still holding this end. Right. I'm turning my hand around. Me like that. Yeah, and then this piece goes over the goes top. On, okay. You're almost there. You got it. Sorry. Slide that ring over the top. You got it. Okay, then just like that. Yeah, and then pull it tight. Okay. Now. And now come back again. And then twist it around again. Like that. And then go farther down. And then just slide it over again. And you're making this little tie. If this doesn't work for you, just <laughs> I have an alternative. <laughs> Staple gun. <laughs> oh, no, I see. I, I'm doing it. You're doing it. And in you fact, folks you're at home that are having fun at my expense, let's see you try it. Now, I'm running out of string here, so what do I do? Uh, tie it off right oh, there. Oh, okay. Just but, take uh, that end up and tie it into a knot Do I need this to, piece, like a I, granny knot. Okay, so I should have actually gone a little farther down, though, shouldn't yeah, I? Yeah, but that's fine. That's going to work great. Okay. And just all we're trying to do is keep that seam together down below. Man, I feel a little pressure here. Yeah, that was a little bit... <laughs> was a little I'm long. sorry I put you through that, Tom. <laughs> Next time I'm going to have you prep me before we actually <laughs> go on camera. You did very well. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Are well, we out of string? We'll have to get another piece oh, here, of string, string here. Here's string. Oh, there it is. Okay. So anyway, we've been tying this up. And yep. then if you need to, you know, you can just really almost go around and just tie... Seems like a really good time to take a quick break, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back with more of this Swiss Chicken uh, Florentine. Stay with us. <laughs> The chicken is a direct descendant of a wild fowl that lives in the jungles of Southeast Asia. The chicken was hunted for food as early as 3000 BC, but the Chinese were the first to domesticate the bird around 1400 BC. The first chickens in North America were brought by Spanish explorers in the 1500s. And welcome back to A Fresh Approach. We're in the middle of preparing our recipe of the week, Swiss Chicken Florentine. Peter, what do we do now? Okay, well, we've taken care of the chicken here, and we're still on our wax paper. We're just going to go ahead and season it up on top just a little bit. And for folks who are tuning in late, we had already discussed that the Florentine part of the recipe 
just means anything that has some spinach in it. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Right. Okay. You can pour a little bit of olive oil in the pan. Okay. I'm going to take the chicken, and I have some flour and another piece of wax paper, and I'm going to push them through, you know, just roll them through it. Mm -hmm. And then the seam side goes right down into our pan. Oh, yeah. We okay, and what we're going to do is brown those off. I said this term at the beginning called braising. Yes. And the braising involves first browning in oil. So this is the first part of this dish. Is to br in the braising process, you need to brown them. And I like the flour because it gives a nice, um, put just a little bit more olive oil okay. in there. And you've talked before, we were uh, actually in the commercial break, we were discussing amongst ourselves that we don't really refer to this as rolling Good. in the flour. This is called dredging. Right, dredging. Because see how I'm patting off the excess? I don't really want a whole lot of flour. And actually, that flour becomes the thickening part of the sauce. That little bit of flour that's on those is going to help to thicken the sauce. Okay. Now, part of the reason I use that wax paper is I can just roll it up at this point. Wouldn't want to use this flour for anything no. else because we rolled that raw chicken through it. And this kind of keeps it nice and clean. Our cutting board is ready to go. Now, am I just trying to sear it on all sides? Right. Just get a nice brown all the way around. So we really want to work on high heat, okay. and it may spit a little bit of fat. That's part of it. So I be mean, careful. Yeah, just be careful with that. Okay. But you want to see that go. I'm going to get some ingredients ready for so, the sauce. So what, when do I want to be turning these? Um, just look for a nice brown, golden gotcha. brown to okay. start to happen, and then yeah, you see that one. That's okay. just almost, about there on that okay. one. And what we want to see is just a nice brown come all over them. So I like to work on high heat. If you're a little bit afraid of that, you can turn it down a bit, but don't lose the temperature. You don't want to steam it. That's wonderful. See the okay. color coming in there? Sure. That's part of the flavor of the sauce. I don't know if they can see that. I hope they can. Yeah, I know they can. They sure, they go right there. There we go. So we want to see that brown. <laughs> I'm going to mince up a shallot. Just we're going to put this as part of our sauce. And really from this point, we're all going to work right into the pan. So I have. Peter, I noticed that it almost seems all the professional chefs use shallots. Yeah. It, and it, we don't use them in the home enough, do we? I don't think so. And I think it's just really, it gives such a good pungent flavor to a, a sauce where you're not looking for the sweetness. That's the best part of a shallot is that it has that onion. It's an onion flavor, but it doesn't have this high sugar content. And that's real important to some of our... And I use them a lot, as we've seen on the show, so... Mm -hmm. I'm an advocate of it. But if you don't, if you have onion, you can go ahead and substitute it. Also, another, uh, and you can roll about any type of cheese into that Florentine. If you don't care for the Jarlsberg or, or have another type you want to use. Some people care uh, for Swiss instead, or cheddar instead of Swiss, that sort exactly. of thing. Exactly. We it, should mention that uh, today's meal is uh, just barely a yellow just light. Just barely a yellow light. So it's in. in what I say about that is if you have this meal with a, a nice light salad mm -hmm. or a dessert that's light, maybe fruit at the end, it would become a green light meal. Mm -hmm. So we want to combine it with some of those items. But this is in our yellow light area. What I have here is some fresh tarragon. And tarragon is just a wonderful flavor. In fact, it's the dominant flavor that we're going to look for in our sauce today. Should I put a little more oil in here? Um, no, actually, that's we're pretty okay. good. Yep. Okay. We want to minimize that oil. We don't really need it. We just need it as the medium to brown that off. And we're looking pretty good there. It's very yeah. nice. I have some of that and I have some thyme as well. This little floured thyme. More fresh ingredients. And I'm just going to chop those up pretty loosely. I don't mind seeing some pieces of those over the top. Have you had much luck growing any herbs in your garden? Do you do oh, that? Oh, we grow, yeah. The, the herbs are just wonderful in this area. My, our friends actually, it's funny because I've been beating up herbs, to be honest with you. I, I get them going, right. but for some reason I lose them. I either don't water them enough or water them too much. Right. But my friend Anna, she, she, her basil is the best. <laughs> and I always say, Anna, if you plant a little extra, I'll make you some pesto or something with it. So, Anna, if you're out there watching, Way I'm to go, looking Anna. for that pesto. So instead of uh, <laughs> Peter going over for a cup of sugar, he's over there for a, uh, a tablespoon of basil, most there we likely. Go. All right, we have the chicken nice and brown. Right. We're going to go ahead and add our shallots, and we just go ahead right in the pot there. And okay. You can just move them around with your tongs. And we have a, the, our herbs going to go in. So just mix all this together. Yep. Is that and the idea? Just, yep. You're just right in there. Wow. And Wait, then I that have. smell great? I don't know if the floor crew can get a smell of this, but. That's that tarragon. Oh. Tarragon's a really uh, wow. wonderful flavor. Then I have a quarter cup of dry white wine, and anyone will do, but I would stay away from the sweet wines, the Riesling, uh, the Sauvignon Blanc. Those, I would stay away from those. This is like a Chablis. Okay. 
about a quarter cup or so. We're going to put that right in, let that cook down a little bit. So if you do this afternoon, you can pour yourself a little half glass as well. There you go. And I guarantee I you, put, you start cooking this in the kitchen, people are going to walk in and say, what are you making? Because mm -hmm. this is really smelling good. And then I have um, about a half a cup of water here, and I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, Better Than Bouillon. Um, yeah, we've talked about this before. And I put a little bit of that in there, about a quarter teaspoon or so. So this, start, this goes a long way. And this makes our chicken broth. And again, the reason why I like using this is there's no MSG. It's made from chicken extract. That's the primary ingredient in it is mm -hmm. chicken. And then that just mixes up about a half a cup, and that goes right in. And how long do we normally go with this? Now, what we want to do is bring this up to a simmer. We want to see that liquid come to a simmer. Okay. And this is the next part of braising. We went from the browning stage. Now we're going into the next phase, and that's going to be to cook the chicken. We're going to bring it to a simmer, and you want to make sure you see good steam coming off the top. Then cover it up in about 10 to 12 minutes. Those will cook those chicken breasts so up. So do we cover this up now? Yeah, let's see a little bit of steam coming off. And okay. you can see it coming up. Right. That's just about where we want to be. And that's important because then we're going to lower the heat down. And what's happening is because we brought it to a simmer, it started the process, and then right. we won't lose that heat. I got you. And so what we'll do is go down. We, we're still on high heat here. Mm -hmm. We'll put the cover on. We'll turn it down to probably low to medium and let it go about 10 to 12 minutes. To Keep that lid chicken. on, too. Yes. All right. And that'll steam them the rest of the way. Okay, we're going to take a quick break now, but when we come back, the final touches and, of course, the sherry taste test. We'll be right back. More Fresh Approach coming up. And remember, you can pick up your fresh sheet for Swiss Chicken Florentine featuring Linden Farms chicken breasts in the meat and seafood department. Just look for the Fresh Approach display. All right, Peter, time for us to get uh, put this whole meal together. All right, we, we braised off our chicken. Right. We pull out right now. And then... Do we cut the string? Right, we're going to cut the string off. Okay. That's a nicely tied one. That might be mine. I think it might be. <laughs> Here we go. I'm just going to take those pieces off. Okay. And then what we do is now the sauce on this one's going to be a lighter sauce. It's not going to have a big thick sauce here. It's almost uh, a juice type sauce, and that just keeps it light for the summer. Mm -hmm. There we go. And then we'll just slice this. We just and you slice can see. it right down. Look at that. That is beautiful. I'll tell you, this is a great way to get the kids, I think, to eat the spinach. Adults too. There we go. Very nicely so you done. Can go ahead and start spooning a little sauce on the plate. Okay. Want some sauce on the plate here? Yeah, there you go. You lay it on the sauce, or you can yeah, just you, you can, can put, put the sauce under it or over it. I okay. like to show them the spinach. Okay. So, and this cheese is just enough to stay with it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna grab a, a taste of that. May I? Yes. Before we run out of time here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm just gonna grab the whole darn thing. Look at that. How tender that is. Mm. That. Linden, that fresh chicken really comes off those Linden Farms fresh chicken. Flavor of tarragon. The cheese is just wonderful. I am not kidding. This is absolutely wonderful. This may be one of the best ones you've put together. Right. This is great. And I served it with some dill green beans. Just sauteed some green beans with dill and a little bit of rice, packaged okay. rice mix with mushrooms. Hey, we're back next Sunday. Let us know how you like the recipe. See you then. Bye-bye now. Thanks, Peter. Set provided by Home Innovations. A fresh approach has been brought to you by Tidyman.